welcome to my channel. My name's John and I'm the Geeky Mank. And today I'm actually heading back in time to the late 1700s and discovering a settlement. So let's crack on and go and see what we can find. just about to head into the Moravian village here in Drawsden in Greater Manchester. Yeah, it definitely is like stepping back in time. Now I've grew up around here, so I've always been aware of the village, but in all honesty, I didn't know much about the history until I decided to make this video. What we'll do is we'll walk around to our first location in a moment, but I do want to give you some quick geeky facts. Fairfield Moranian Church and its surrounding settlement was founded in 1785 in Fairfield, Drawsden. It was founded by Benjamin Latrobe as the centre for Eve journalistic work for the Moranian Church in the Manchester area. I'm on the area known as the Square and I'm going to be coming back here afterwards to go into a bit more information about Pacific properties here. But this first street we're going to head down is called Burfan Street. So let's take a look. Like I say, I mean, without the cars here, uh, you literally would think you're in the late 1700s. Absolutely stunning place. There's this on the wall that I just want to show you. Now apparently it was discovered when there was regeneration work happening in the 1950s. The reason it was placed there, and which would happen on quite a lot of the properties, is it was one of the first lot of buildings that were actually made within the settlement. What we're going to do now is we're going to head down and we're going to walk and take a look at the church. And as you can see, I'm outside the church at the moment. The foundation stone for this church was actually laid on the 9th of June, 1784. And there was an inscription laid on it about the mission of the actual settlement. Unfortunately, I was unable or unable to actually locate it. But what we'll do is we'll take a closer look anyway. I mean, it's an absolutely beautiful morning, but it is a bit nippy, so I've uh, risked it a little bit wearing just a t-shirt. Let's have a quick look down here, because I just want to show you this, which is a bit of interest. Now, as you could probably see, there were them crosses that were marked into the, stone, um, into the stonework. Now apparently it was reading that this was due to stop or place in there for thieves so uh, if people were to steal it they would know it, where it came from. Whether or not that's true or not I don't know. Uh, anyone that has more knowledge on that please leave comments down below and also anyone that knows about the actual foundation stone information again please leave a comment down below. We'll take a closer look though at the church. obviously a very beautiful grand building what i'm going to do now though is seeing as i'm here i'm going to head into the burial ground and then give you a little bit of information about the history and why the settlement actually settled here
welcome to the burial ground now it's a little bit different than the christianity side of things in regards to the tombstones they're not really sort of tombstones they're just laid across the floor here and it's very basic information that they have on it so it will just be the person's name which property they lived in and also the date uh, the date that they passed away so yeah it's really really sort of basic in that sense i mean this is a beautiful day for me to come and film this today and you can probably hear the birds in the back which is certainly adding to the experience i'm just going to go ahead over there now have a sit down and like i said we'll discuss the information about how the settlement came to settle here in Drawsden. In 1742, the Moranians established a headquarters in Lightcliffe near Halifax. Evangelicus moved to actually work within the Manchester area and in 1751 actually set up a congregation in Duckingfield. By 1755, a small settlement was there. But due to the limited scope of being able to redevelop and expand, they decided to move the area. In 1783, they purchased this land here from local farmers. It was around about £6,000 they paid at the time, which in today's money probably works out about between 1.2 to 1.5 million. When they purchased the land, it actually has a lease of 999 years. So let's crack on and go and discover more of the settlement. I'm now stood outside Brethren House, which opened in 1785. Today it's Fairfield High School. The girls and it has been since 1922. Now when it first originally opened the local men who were single within the settlement actually lived there. It then became a boys boarding school and after that a girls boarding school until 1922 when of course it has been Fairfield High School for girls. Now there is an interesting plaque on the front of it and it's for Mary Moffat. Now, if you're not sure who she is, she actually used, well, she was David Livingston's uh, mother-in-law. Now, I do have a video um, where I walk from Ashton to Hyde, and I actually discuss her a little bit more in detail, as it does pass the property where she used to live along the canal. So please, give that a watch afterwards. I'm going to go ahead to our next location and give a bit more information about that. Welcome to Sister's House. Now, like the last property we actually visited, this is where they housed all the single women within the settlement. It then became the girls' boarding school before moving. And then after that, it actually became the Theologist College and actually was there until 1973 before it opened to become the local hall for the settlement. Now what I do like on it is it's still got the college sign. And we'll take a bit more of a look at the front of the building. Oh, again. All the crosses on the stonework. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head back up to the square and we'll give a bit more information and a look round there. Mm -hmm. 
So the Moranians were actually a Protestant body set up in the 15th century. They lived within the area now known as the Czech Republic, but due to persecution, they started settling all over Europe. Their whole sort of idea was to inform and give information um, about their specific religion and beliefs. now outside number six and the blue plaque on the building is actually for Charles Hindley. Now he lived within the settlement and he was a local cotton mill owner. He was also the MP for Ashton of the Line. He was massively into the reform within factories to help improve conditions for children. Let's cross across the road and go to our next location. We're outside number 21 to 23 and this actually used to be the weaving factory within the community. There's also an interesting plaque on the wall here I want to show you. So I'm just going to head across the road and we'll go to our next location. We're now outside what would have been the settlement's pub and it was opened and reopened on many different occasions due to the poor drinking habits of the local men. Let's just head a bit further on down here. This building on here is actually what would have been the stables for the settlement as well. Now it probably doesn't surprise you that this location has been used on quite a number of different occasions as a filming location. Probably most recently and probably also most sort of famously it has been used for Peaky Blinders. I'm just going to head to our last little place and give you one more bit of information before the video ends. I'm now at the front entrance on Fairfield Road and that gives you a bit of the sense of the building work that happened following the settlement with the terrace houses which became a sort of standard building for the Manchester area. Now Benjamin Latrell, who was the gentleman who set up the settlement, quite interestingly, his son, Benjamin Henry Larold, was the chief architect who actually built most of the buildings within Washington, which I found extremely interesting. So this has been today's video. In my next video, I'm actually going to carry on here in Drawsden and I'm going to be following a forgotten canal. So, until next time, peace and